Deadpool and Wolverine is an amazing celebration of Marvel. Let's talk about it. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. What is up, guys? Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Hit that subscribe button for more pop culture videos. And also, this video will contain massive spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine, so make sure you've watched it first. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I did a full video talking about why I was really excited about Deadpool and Wolverine. You can watch that video. I'll put it as a card. But I went to see it last night in cinemas, and to be honest, it did not disappoint at all. I absolutely love this movie. And I think there are a lot of reasons that this movie worked so well, but what I want to focus in on is that Deadpool and Wolverine is a true celebration of the Fox Marvel Universe. If you're not familiar, before the MCU and in the 2000s and some of the 90s, there were a bunch of Marvel movies produced by Fox. The most successful franchise that came out of this was definitely X-Men. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But of course, there was also the Fantastic Four series with Ian Griffith as Mr. Fantastic. I also did a video on why those are underrated. You guys look like an 80s rock band. As well as other kind of smaller movies like the original Daredevil with Ben Affleck, the spin-off of that with Jennifer Garner's Elektra, and even before that, Blade. <laughs> And the original X-Men continuity continued for a really long time and Deadpool was kind of considered part of that. But Deadpool and Wolverine really brings Deadpool into the MCU while also ceremoniously farewelling this sometimes forgotten era of Marvel. Of course, this movie is hilarious, fourth wall breaking and a little absurd at times, but there is so much substance here. And as a fan, a longtime fan of most of Marvel's work, I really appreciate appreciated what they did. Bringing back Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, of course, was always going to be big because of the way that Logan ended. And this is the lingering question that I had going into this movie, but they kind of do away with this within the first 10 seconds of the movie where Deadpool narrates that they're not going to do justice to Logan and that's okay. It really sets the tone for what this movie is going to be. It's not going to be like Logan. And the best part of that is that the Wolverine that we see in this movie is from an alternate universe to the Wolverine from Logan. And immediately being an alternate universe Wolverine, it puts away all of my complaints about how Logan would come back from dying in Logan. So you kind of get the best of both worlds where we get to see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine again, but it's not the same Wolverine. So it doesn't undo Logan and the original Wolverine story. It's just Hugh Jackman depicting Wolverine. Oh, this is what it feels like. And I guess this offers a really good advantage to Marvel who can really theoretically bring back any actor they want to play any character and just use the thing of alternate universe. Hint, hint, Tony Stark will return at some point. And the team up or rivalry between Deadpool and Wolverine is absolutely great, but where the movie really excels for longtime fans is the cameos. And probably the first or the biggest cameo that we see is Chris Evans appear in this movie. Assemble. No! And of course, Chris Evans portrayed Captain America in the MCU. And when we see Chris Evans, of course, we assume that he is Captain America and even Deadpool is ready for him to say Avengers Assemble, but instead he says, Flame On. Flame on! Because of course, Chris Evans played Johnny Storm, AKA Human Torch in the Fox Fantastic Four movies. This was such a perfect way to throw off the audience, but also to pay homage to that film franchise, that character who was very popular and just do something really cool that I don't know how they could do in any other movies. And I went into this movie pretty much completely blind. So I had absolutely no idea that any of this would be happening. I absolutely loved seeing Chris Evans again in the MCU as the Human Torch. I just thought that was an incredible cameo, but it didn't stop there because later in the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine meet a group of other characters from old Marvel movies including Blade from Blade, Elektra from Elektra, and X-23, aka Wolverine's daughter from Logan. And these were such surprising cameos that just worked so well, again, to pay tribute to these original movies. I mean, I never expected to see Jennifer Garner pop up as Elektra 
ever again. And to be honest, I don't know if many kind of casual fans of Marvel would even recognize who that was. And there is a lot of meta and fourth wall breaking comedy where I'm pretty sure even Elektra says this world has forgotten about us. Kind of directly referencing the fact that no one really thinks about those movies anymore. And the MCU has completely taken over. <laughs> Deadpool also makes a direct to the camera nod about why the multiverse doesn't work and why people are over it, which I think is very true. It seems we're in a universe where everything is drawn by Disney. And I've got to say, I love the attention to detail and also the ability of Marvel and Disney to laugh at themselves in this movie. I'm the mascot of an evil corporation. It really makes me feel more trust in the brand and more trust that they know what to do next and what not to do. And I think moving into this new era of Marvel is a really good thing. Overall, I think Deadpool and Wolverine was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was violent, it was funny, it was epic, it was a crossover of unexpected proportions, right? And it all ends with the credits in almost a cliche nod of the head playing Green Day's Time of Your Life to a montage of behind the scenes interviews and backstage footage from the filming of movies like X-Men, Fantastic Four and other movies from that era. And it's at this point that I realize exactly what Marvel was doing with this film, which was celebrating their history and celebrating their movies. And honestly, I can't think of a better way that they could have done it. This movie was beautiful and you need to go and see it as soon as you can especially if you're a Marvel fan. Whew, thank you so much for watching, guys. Another video done and dusted. Hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. Thumbs up the video and leave a comment below. I want to know what's your favorite of that era of Marvel movies. For me, I will always have a massive soft spot for those Fantastic Four movies. I thought they were so good and you can watch my video on that. There'll be a card here. If you want more from me, I'm all over the internet doing cool things. Just search Radio Mike. I have a blog. I have a podcast. They'll pop up somewhere on the screen here and a bunch of other content that I'd love for you to check out. If you like movies, on my podcast feed, 20th Century Boy, we actually do a monthly movie club where with our listeners, we watch a movie and then talk about it in a podcast format. So I'd love for you to check that out. This month's movie is Palm Springs and they come out on the last day of every month. But that's pretty much all from me. Make sure you check out some of my other videos and stay tuned for more. My name's Sid Radio Mike. This has been the Inside of My Mind and I'll catch you later.